So anyway, let's talk about you. You're, right. you're, you're actually here. You're based here. I'm Neil. based in Las Vegas. Yes. That's right. Little known fact. Did anyone know that? No, Our team didn't even know that. They were calling, when's your flights? When are you coming in? Oh, yeah, that's right, because they're trying to book me a right. hotel room. They're like, hey, we're, you know, we got a hotel room for you. And I'm like, that's cool. I kind of live here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get you a hotel room. I'm like, thank yeah. you, though. Yeah. OK, so we met a while ago. I'm trying to figure, figure out in the green room here when, when that was. I think it was online. It was. Like in the early kind of Web 2.0 blogosphere days. It was a somewhat frank day. Somewhat frank. That was me. You somewhat worked frank. for AOL at the time? Yes. And I hit you up saying, do you want more traffic to Somewhat Frank? And I said, absolutely. <laughs> and I think that's how we started yep. our relationship. And then we ended up meeting in person. So it was that weird time of like back in the day. Do you all remember this? Or was I just, uh, where you'd actually meet people online in some way. And then it was before Twitter and that's Facebook right. were really doing that too. And, and there was no Twitter or Facebook back then. No, it was blog. Blogs were the way to do it. That's right. So anyway, so we've known each other for a while. But you've done a, a number of things. Um, just prior to that, and, and, and a lot around online marketing and growing audience. Yep. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about your background in that and when you got started. Like you, I think you started at like 12 or 13 or something. I mean, it was... Not that young. I wish I did. I <laughs> uh, started at 16. OK, very close, very close. And what was that first kind of involvement? What was that first company? Or how did you get started? Um, so the way it got started was I wanted to be rich. Oh, that's a simple, pretty simple, yeah. And I grew up in Orange County, California, but the poor part, right? Okay. Like with um, like low-income apartment complexes and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Not mm -hmm. the part where everyone's driving a Ferrari oh. or stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're growing up in Orange County, you still do see all the other people with money, even right. though there's a poor parts. Just like New York, everyone's like, New York's expensive, which it is, but right. there are the poor parts of New York. Right. What ended up happening was, my sister at that time was working for a guy who was an Oracle financial consultant. Mm -hmm. And he would go into like grocery stores like Whole Foods mm -hmm. and figure out where items should be placed for maximum revenue. And mm -hmm. he would charge 250 bucks an hour. Wow. And he had employed a big staff that did this and he would pay him out like 100 something an hour, charge two something an hour, wow. to keep the difference. So he was banking just to he put was products in, in a place. And as a kid, yeah. I was like, $125 you know, an hour? I'm like, I'll be rich. <laughs> so I go online to look for a job as an Oracle financial consultant. Keep in mind, I had no idea what Oracle was at this time. <laughs> so I Google it. I go to monster.com, try to find these jobs. And they're like, you need to be Oracle financial uh, certified. I'm like, what the hell is this Oracle company? <laughs> and then it was like, you need a college degree. I'm like, crap, I'm only 16. How am I going to get a college degree really quickly? Mm -hmm. So instead, while I was on that site, I was scrolling down at Monster, and they had a link to their stock symbol, and I clicked on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, shit, this company does over 100 million bucks in revenue a year? You're going to be rich. Yeah, I'm like, they're <laughs> making them all the money. Forget being an Oracle oh. financial consultant. 125 an hour, 100 million. Mm -hmm. So I decided to just copy Monster.com, mm. and I created a shitty version of it. No. And I was like, I'm going to be rich. So I set up the website, <laughs> got no visitors to it. I thought people just magically appeared to your site. I was like really magic. Naive. Yeah. And I couldn't figure out how to make money. I was so stupid, I didn't even have credit card processing. I'm like, no shit, you're not going to make money. You can't accept <laughs> payments online. So. so how were people paying? They weren't paying. I didn't well. make money. <laughs> but I got really good at driving traffic. OK. And I was a book nerd, so mm -hmm. I was also taking nighttime college classes. Mm -hmm. I got rankings from my own site, started getting good traffic. Mm -hmm. Still couldn't figure out how to make money, but I figured out the traffic part. Mm -hmm. I, in college, at night, while I was going to high school, so I did that. Worked a nine to five job at a theme park called Knott's Berry Farm, picking up trash, and in nighttime college classes mm -hmm. while all trying to start that business at the same time. Mm -hmm. The first college class I took was Speech 101. Mm -hmm. I gave a speech on how search engines work. One of the dudes in the class worked for this corporation mm -hmm. that was doing like 50 million bucks a year. And he said, Hey, do you want to do this for my company? Or like, I can introduce you to my boss. And I was like, All right. So mm -hmm. the dude paid me like $3,500 a month for mm -hmm. 10 hours worth of work a month. I was like, I'm banging it. I'm like, You're this like, is I'm rich. A, yeah. I'm like, this is a good life. Yeah. Little did I know, I was giving them over twenty-five million dollars in leads every month. Oh my gosh! <laughs> right? And the, they were getting rich. They were getting rich. <laughs> yeah. The owner's son mm -hmm. had a decent-sized ad agency in LA. He mm -hmm. hooked me up with at that time, Blue Cross, Countrywide, oh, wow. uh, ING Direct, and a few others. And like, next thing you know, I was like. 16 years old, and I was getting like 20 grand worth of checks a month. And I was like, this is a good life. Oh my gosh. These guys started writing checks, and they're like, which company do you want it to? I was like, Neil Patel Inc. And I'm like, there really was no company. I just made up my own ink. And then I didn't realize you can't cash the checks if you don't really have a corporation. <laughs> 
<laughs> so then you had to do that. Yeah, then I actually had to create a company, but it worked out. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so you, you have learned along, along the way. It seems like you dive right in and, and, and figure it out. That's your approach. I'm one of those guys where I just hustle. I'm like, I do whatever it takes to make shit work. Mm -hmm. And anything in life, it's really weird. If I put my mind to it, I usually can figure it out. Like, if you want to say, let's go to the moon, yeah, I can't figure that shit out. <laughs> but if someone has, like, a business problem mm -hmm. or, like, um, I, I'm almost able to hack, like, anything, like, the most randomest things. So we're, let's give some examples. Out. Like, what are some of the things you've been hacking on lately that are, are problems that... Are there any examples that come to mind? Business problems or general problems? Uh, let's start with business first, and then we'll go to general. So getting traffic, yep. right? Uh, so someone's like, hey, we can make X dollars. Mm -hmm. Getting people to sign up for this, how do we get traffic? And yep. I was like, all right. So they were a healthcare company, mm -hmm. or health, like pills and mm -hmm. stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, vitamins, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. I'm like, who are your competition? And I figured out how to make a landing page that blended in with the competitors like type oh. of like site so the color schemes and stuff didn't take their logo wow, or you're, design you're or tricky like that. sneaky almost. and i figured out how to get facebook ads mm -hmm. to target all of their fans and people who are interested in the competitors products mm. and then pitch them on why it was a better replacement so. oh interesting okay so now personal what are some personal hacks oh am i uh, am i echoing i thought i heard echo did you guys hear the echo i thought it was just me yeah. Whew. Neil has an echo too. You oh, can't you? hear me. Oh, let's. Um, can we get one more mic down here? Okay, we'll we'll get another mic. It's on. It's on. It's just. Is this a, better? It, we'll get you another mic to hold. No, no. I, I just think go. it's slow. There you go. You've got one. Okay. Now we can. Now we can. Can you hear us now? Okay. Much Perfect. better. In the back, I see it. All right. So, start over. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. So basically, let's talk about personal hacks. Like, some any personal things you've been hacking on? Yeah, uh, I just hacked something for a friend of mine. He mm -hmm. was like recently single, oh. and he's just like, "Dude, how do I meet?" It was like a specific requirement of type of girls, right? <laughs> so he's just like, "I want to meet girls who are into like yoga, fitness, athletic." So dating hacking. Dating, and then he's just like, "Dude, how do I just like?" meet him in like in large quantities so I can end up figuring out who's right for me. <laughs> and we have another friend who looks like an Abercrombie model. So mm -hmm. I took a sales page. I wrote copy for it. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty much like, do you want to date someone who's like successful, yada, 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 mm -hmm. put his picture on there. I made people authenticate with Facebook so that way you get their <laughs> All details. their data. <laughs> and then I sent it to my buddy and he had all these leads. And then You're he's clever. like, this is awesome. It was like fishing with dynamite too. <laughs> Has it worked out for him? I don't know. I should follow up. I know he yeah, went on a yeah. few dates from it. I don't uh, know what happened after. That's a good after, case study just for personal use. We really did it for like a week. Oh. How many leads do you need, right? Like we yeah. got, I think, like 160-something applicants. Oh, I'm like, dude, this is too many. I'm like, let's turn it off, right? And then <laughs> he didn't want to go through them and keep spending money on Facebook ads. So I'm like, hey, whatever you want to do. Wow. All right. So let's talk about analytics a little bit. We talked about marketing a little bit. Let's talk about analytics. You started a company called Kiss Kissmetrics. Um, what do you feel like? the role of analytics is in, in marketing and just in business in general. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? So I'm a big believer in data. Yeah. Businesses want to grow. If you want to grow, you should be making decisions based off of data versus opinions. Mm -hmm. Gut feelings and stuff are all right, but you're usually going to be better off if you follow the data. Mm -hmm. And I think analytics plays a huge part in it. If you can actually figure out how to analyze the data and get actionable insights from it, mm -hmm. you can eventually grow your business. Okay. So you... How do you distinguish good data and bad data? Because there's some certain metrics or just, you know, vanity metrics. That's correct. So what I look at is what's the lowest hanging fruit? Mm -hmm. I look for the bottlenecks or the clogged arteries, right? Mm -hmm. What's causing things not to grow? Like, oh, is there a drop in traffic? Or mm -hmm. is it, are visitors just not converting? Is there a specific page where everyone's dropping off from the checkout flow? Whatever it may be. So you get so real deep in, on those. I get stuff. really deep. Okay. And then from there, I figure out what to do first based on what I think will have the biggest impact and what's the easiest to do. Okay. And then so, then how does that play into your marketing schemes? Like, do you make, you make those decisions based on the data? That's correct. Okay, great. Um, all right, so how has it changed since you got started? Like, marketing, it's, I feel like just in general, marketing and, and business in general is constantly changing. But what are some things that have totally changed in your business um, since you got started back in, when you were 16 on the marketing side? Sure. Uh, a lot's actually changed. 
Marketing was really easy when I first got started, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Google wasn't this advanced. Uh, there wasn't really a Facebook, right. MySpace, or any of these types of sites. All you do is you just pop up content yeah. and it would be really easy to get ranked. And if you can't get ranked, you just find other bloggers and you pay them money and they can link to you. Right. It's changed. You're not supposed to be buying links these days or right. any of that kind of stuff. It's much more difficult. Mm-hmm. You actually got to create really great content in order to rank. The reason you guys have so much traffic is because your content's awesome. If oh. it wasn't awesome, you wouldn't do well, right? Right. And social media has had a huge impact now, which it's actually easier to get a head start like or from right out of the gates, mm-hmm. it's easy to generate traffic. While mm-hmm. before, you can end up generating traffic. It takes a while, but once it kicks in, you get a lot of traffic. Right. Now, due to social media channels, if you have a following or you know people with a following, mm-hmm. you can actually get... So it's faster. It's faster to start yes, than it used to be. Harder to not, grow. But it's not con- as consistent, right? Because it's, it's, le- it's in like those bursts. That's correct, okay. which makes it harder to grow, right? Right. Because before, the majority yeah. of your traffic would come from referrals, Google, and direct, and emails. Right. And now there's this social channel, which so many people are focusing on because mm. Google's harder to get traffic from. Right. Email is harder to get traffic from as well because now there's this tabs and Gmail and stuff like right. that. And everyone's, there's still a lot of email. We get a lot of email. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. So like yesterday we were trending, uh, Celebrate Conf, the, the hashtag was trending nationally. That was great. You know, we would love to do it again today, by the way. Um, but... It didn't really, like, what does that do? You know, it's, it's like that burst, right? It's not. It's a burst, gets yeah. more people to know about you, your branding. Yeah. Um, yeah. Things are totally different these days. Like, even Instagram, it's so popular. Oh, yeah. And I hate that damn service because you can't add links to anything. Right. So you can't drive it back to your site. And everyone's like, oh, I got like 100,000 followers. I got a million followers on Instagram. Yeah. That's cool. How much traffic does it drive? Zero. I'm like, all right. Then. Right. You know, I've seen, and I've seen people like, they, they're clever. Like, they've gotten clever in workarounds. They're like, post something on their Instagram, like, with some kind of actionable thing. It's like, to find out more, go to my profile because it's the only place you can post a link. That's right. Yeah. Or they're now putting like bit.ly links because mm-hmm. it's shorter and they're hoping people type it in. So like Kim yeah. Kardashian on her post that, is bit.ly links. Seriously, like... It is. It's, yeah, okay. Uh, so, so that's definitely changed. What other... Um, are, have any of the uh, principles or anything that you've used to like kind of to grow, grow different businesses or anything changed over the, with those changes or...? Concepts have been very similar. The main difference that's came about is it's all about how you can leverage your users to grow. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it's like growth hacking, right? Yeah, I wanted to talk about that, yeah. Is everybody familiar with growth hacking? You you know what this is? A couple people. I want to give a quick... Yeah, it's um, the true definition of a growth hacker is someone knows who points true north. Mm-hmm. in which all they do is try to figure out how to grow a business in whatever mm-hmm. ways, whether it's through traffic acquisition, whether yeah. it's referral programs, whether it's affiliate programs. Mm-hmm. They're just trying to figure out different ways to modify a product or whatever it may be to get a leg up. Mm-hmm. A good example of this is Dropbox. Mm-hmm. When Dropbox tried to do paid acquisition, I believe the user cost to acquire a user was like two to 300 bucks. Right. And when their paid plan starts at $99 a year, that's where it is, something like that. Right you actually lose money. Right. The economics don't work yeah, out. Yeah, it doesn't seem to work out. Yeah. So Dropbox had to figure out, all right, if we have a free plan, how can we actually get people to refer more? Mm-hmm. So like tweet it out and you right. can get more space. Share it for Facebook. more space. Yeah, yeah. That's correct. That's so a good a example of, of growth hacking. Interesting. Okay. That's a good example. Um, we're going to be doing some Q&A in the audience here in a little bit. So if you have questions, be thinking about them and save them and we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, okay, so we talked about growth hacking a little bit. Are there any things, anything with that, that any tips for anybody starting a business here tonight or has a business here today that they should, how they should attack that? Focus. So if you're going to start a business, you can look at growth channels, you can look at SEO, you can look at mm-hmm. PPC, whatever it mm-hmm. may be. But what you should be focusing on is one channel. Pick the one that you think that's going to work, mm-hmm. double down on it. Once it starts working, expand to others. If it doesn't work, dump it and move on to the next. Mm-hmm. But you don't have too much time as a founder or a startup to just be like, oh, all right, we're going to go after everything. Sure, you raise millions of dollars, by all means, go after multiple channels. Right. So just focus. Do you still, I mean, do you, do you feel like search is still a main driver or can be a main driver? Or is, that, is that what you rely on? Or It is. And I see Google being a much larger revenue-based business than Facebook for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Why? Because when someone does a search mm-hmm. for like, iPhone, they're looking to buy usually, right? Or they're looking for information. But usually, like, people will be like, new iPhone. You Mm -hmm. can't go to Facebook and type in new iPhone. Well, they have it, but no one, who's, does anybody search on Facebook? No. Anybody? It's okay to say if you are one of those searchers. Yeah, I think it's being, yeah. I guess it's searching to find, yeah, friends. I don't know. Yeah, but it's not 
there's no buyer intent. Right, right. When you're on Facebook, it's more like, oh, I see this cool ad. I'm trying to find this because I need it. Yeah, that makes That's sense. Correct. Interesting. Uh, so intent's important. Intent's very important, and Google has that all day long. And that's why mm -hmm. pay-per-click on Google costs way more money per click mm -hmm. than Facebook does any day of the week. Are you seeing – so there's also now vertical – different types of vertical searches, and there have been people trying to ta attack that space. Are there other searches or anything like, like that that you have looked at or ta toyed with that have, have worked? No, just the volume isn't there. Okay. YouTube ads is really effective, though. Is it? Okay, yeah. so YouTube is, is obviously a huge search engine. It's a huge search engine, and yeah. funny enough, a lot of startups these days are going faster from YouTube ads than anything else. Really? Because cost-wise, it's really cheap. So and like pre-roll ads, you mean, or like those little pre-roll ads? Like I kid you not, in front of the video, like yeah. they're doing like um, those fifteen second, fifteen second, and it's like those animated videos. Yeah. You know what are those called? Explainer videos. Right. And those are crushing it for a lot of startups and companies. And they're There's, not as expensive to run. Not as expensive, but it's scaling and it's profitable. Like I know people that are spending around like 100, 200 grand a month just on those pre-roll with demos of their startup app or whatever it may be. And they're getting return out of that though. They're, yeah. they're obviously not just doing it for fun. So they would have to then make more than 200,000 from correct. that. So that like buy. On, on Crazy Egg, we spend more money on YouTube ads than any other paid ad channel. Mm -hmm. And not only does it convert, we make more money within that same 30 days yeah. than we do in what it costs to acquire a customer. It's like that cheap. Wow. Interesting. All right. Uh, we've got about 20, 20 minutes left. How are you feeling? Do you have anything else you want to share or do you want to open up to Q&A? I can talk about whatever you want or open up to Q&A, whatever I think there could do. be. Do you guys have questions for Neil? I'm just curious. Is he yes or no? Yes, yes? Yeah, you want to talk? Do you want to ask him some questions? Or do you want me to keep asking him questions? I'll keep, I'll keep going. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, in a little bit. Okay. Um, so you kind of self-taught. You've been doing this for a while. You also have in, you, you had some investments. You've been investor advisor for co in companies for a while. I stopped advising. It just takes way too much time. Right. Uh, and I realized I'd probably make more if I just charge companies, <laughs> right, instead of getting advisor shares. Because you want to be rich. I, I, not anymore. I, <laughs> I'm like, I don't care for money. I'm not rich, though. It's just, yeah. just So what happy. motivates you then? Making more money. <laughs> but it's a game now. It's not like, mm -hmm. uh, by no means have I done well, but I don't worry about rent or food or anything like mm -hmm. that, right? So now it's just a game, like, how big can you grow the company? Right. And I'm really weird in which when I make more money, it's not like I want to take that money and have, like, a salary. I just mm -hmm. want to, like, dump it right back in and see how big I can make the company. That makes sense. And you've got now, how many companies that you do have? That I really focus on? Yeah. Or how many do I have? That you focus on, and then how many do you have? Uh, focus on, I have Crazy Egg, mm -hmm. which also owns like Hello Bar, so I count that as one company. Hello the, Bar? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely familiar with that. And then Kiss Metrics, I spend a lot of time on that. Mm -hmm. And other than that, my holding company, I spend a lot of time on that, but it does random silly projects okay. that are just like fun. Like if I find like a real estate property that I like, I'll just mm -hmm. buy it, tear it down, build something, and like flip it, or like silly things like that. Cool. So you've, you've done some stuff in real estate as well. Oh, cool. Vegas is a great market for it. The banks were struggling when I came in last year, mm -hmm. and they're all trying to get bank loans, and they didn't have 51% occupancy in some of the buildings. So, like, I was flying to Vegas, and this is how I ended up getting my first place here. It was, like, uh, early last year. Mm -hmm. And my buddy, he was chatting with me on, you know, because there's Wi-Fi on planes. And he's like, what are you up to? I'm like, oh, I'm going to Las Vegas right now. He's like, do you want a home there? <laughs> and I was like, Just eh. stopping by. Do you want a home? <laughs> he's like, I'm like, you have a good deal? And he's like, dude, the Mandarin Oriental, mm -hmm. they spent $1,000 a square foot to build the units. Wow. I can get penthouses for 250 bucks a square foot. Wow. He's like, but you got to buy it today. I'm like, cool. And mm -hmm. I landed and literally there was a car that picked me up there and him mm -hmm. and I were just like, buy, 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 whatever we could get. Wow. That's it's crazy. It's like silly. And they had to sell 51% so they can redo their bank loans, right? Oh, so we're just like. Because they're moving product fast. They're moving product. And they're looking for people who can move within 24 hours, no inspection, no nothing. Like, wow. I wired the money without actually signing that I bought the place. Wow. So I was just like, uh, I hope I don't get ripped off. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. But it worked it out. It worked out. Yeah, that's it pretty amazing. Um, so you've been here since last December. Uh, this is your first time downtown. Uh, I've been downtown before to party and get drunk. <laughs> I've never really been downtown during the day for work. Okay. 
We'll have to we'll have to get you out and show you around a little bit. All right. So um, you mentioned that you were advising. You don't do that anymore. You invest. You've invested in companies too. Yeah, I think I've invested in like twenty something, thirty companies or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And I you s- kind of toned that down too. I toned it down. I didn't make good money. I didn't make. I didn't lose money. Mm-hmm. But for the returns, if I just put that money into myself, I would have made way more money. Right. And it's like, I don't actually enjoy investing in other startups because mm-hmm. at first I did, I'm like, oh, they're going to listen to me and right. like, I can help them grow. Mm-hmm. Then you find out that once they get money, like, they, they don't, don't care. listen to you. No, they just do whatever they want. I'm like, all right, screw this. <laughs> so um, <laughs> when did you have that real, realization? Like, how long did that take? Uh, it took two, three years. Mm-hmm. I would say I, probably on the third year, I probably slowed down on investing. Mm-hmm. And I was just cranking away. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to give these guys advice. I know if you make this change, you can probably like increase your revenue by another 20%. Mm-hmm. Then they don't make the change. And I'm like, what the F, right? Yeah. I put money in and like I'm putting, I was putting in decent sized chunks, like 50, 100 grand into some, 25 yeah. into the smaller ones. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, what the hell? Like I want a return on my damn money. Like it's a business, right? right. Yeah. It's like if you don't make the change, I know you're not going to make that much money. So it's like make the change. Mm-hmm. And then it just didn't work out. So you, you kind of don't do that anymore. All right. Um, is that you're going to ever think about getting back into that? And getting, it sounds like you need more of a hands-on program, like a, almost like a hybrid or something where you're like more hands-on with the companies. That's right. So I tried doing that with a CRM business. Mm-hmm. We acquired it. So I, I prefer just acquiring businesses now instead of investing. Mm-hmm. And what I'll do is I'll put people in place to mm-hmm. run it mm-hmm. and I'll find a company that I can just buy that's doing all right. Mm-hmm. But if I can fix the growth, like I can double, triple the revenue. Right. And it's a much easier model. And then either sell it or... What? Or hold on to it. For a little bit. As long as it's cash flowing, it doesn't matter. Right, exactly. Oh, guys, okay. so that's a different model. So you've been doing that a little bit. Yeah, and that's why Hello Bar, I didn't create Hello Bar, I bought yeah, Hello Bar. Yeah, that's right. I was going to say, but are people familiar with Hello, Hello Bar, the little bar on the top of Yeah, so people know that. So you acquired it. When did you acquire that? Uh, I think it was a few years ago. Okay. It was from a company called Digital Telepathy, a design agency. Yeah, out of San Diego. Yeah. yeah. And they're just like, yeah, we have this problem. I'm like, hey, you should sell it. And they're like, yeah, we're like open. They're like, who's going to buy it? I'm like, oh, I'll buy it. Yeah. And then. They sold it to me. Started to think about it. Actually, Mike Macadan, who was supposed to be here, couldn't make it today with some things he had tied up. Uh, he's run science out in Santa Monica. Yeah. Um, you bought one of his companies. I bought Twist back. Up from him. Twist Up, which I don't know if people, people are familiar with it, but it was out in San, San Francisco or Santa Monica. And um, it was doing, you know, bringing community together and doing different types of events. Is that still work? I don't heard no, from it. No, we closed it down. Oh, you did? Okay. We actually lost money on that one. Mm-hmm. I have the email list of all the attendees and stuff if you want it. Just yeah, that'd be awesome, me. actually. We should email talk. Email me. I'll, yeah. I'll send it yeah. to you. <laughs> uh, great. And it was like a big list, too. Yeah. So what ended up happening with Twist Up was it required so much work to throw a conference. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Versus how much money I was making. I'm like, crap, I could just go focus on software and I made way more money. Yeah. And the way I was making money from the events, and mm-hmm. the events were fun and that was the yeah. main reason we did it. Mm-hmm. But the way I made money from the events wasn't ticket sales. I would just hit up my buddies. I'm like, hey, dude, can you sponsor this event? And right. I just keep calling. And I'm like, I hate calling my friends asking him for money, for, money yeah. for sponsoring. Yeah. But that was the only way that the events did well. And when we had the sponsors, like, some of our events would make well over 100 grand in profit. Right. It was just too much work for but the amount of But you have to make money in that business continue to do that. Yes. Yes. It was just too much work for the amount of money it made. Right. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right. We're down to 14. Are you ready for some questions here in the audience? Mm-hmm. 